Hey guys, what's going on? It's Riley Rose and Gamer Girl is definitely back. I have a ton of stuff to say about gay people and I have a ton of stuff to say about video games. I figured, what's a better way to do Gamer Girl again but by starting with a video about gay men in video games. The first character I want to talk about today is the reigning king of Liberty City's nightlife in Grand Theft Auto 4. Anthony, gay Tony Prince, first appears as a minor character in the storyline The Lost and the Damned. Fuck you all! But eventually he inspired his own DLC called The Ballad of Gay Tony. Since Grand Theft Auto 4 was released in 2008 and the DLC was released in 2009, it was a pretty big deal to have such an outwardly gay character in this video game. Especially because being gay wasn't a huge part of his storyline. The Ballad of Gay Tony follows GTA's main character, Lewis, as he's sent on a mission to get Tony out of all his debts. The only options players really have is to sell one of Tony's many clubs. But instead, Tony has a grand scheme to buy and sell over $2 million worth of diamonds. But then of course, a motorcycle club screws up the deal and this ultimately leads to the death of Tony's boyfriend, Evan Moss. And like in true GTA fashion, Lewis and Tony manage to get through all the craziness and Tony even gets to keep his club. We prosper. We took on his town and we won. We took on his place and we gave it the fucking finger. The Ballad of Gay Tony was received exceptionally well with critics and audiences. It even won a Spike Video Game Award for the best DLC in 2009. I really love the fact that even though he's called Gay Tony, being gay isn't a huge part of his storyline. It's just the fact that he has a partner who's a man. I really hope we get to see more of Gay Tony in the future. Who knows, maybe we get a GTA 6 release with the PS5 and he gets another story in it. I'd like to see it. Come on, let's get out of here. Let's go. I've talked about the Fable series in previous videos, so this isn't the first time that this game has had a gay moment, but this is definitely one of my favorite characters on the list. In Fable 2, players have the option of helping Farmer Giles and his son, Rupert. If you help them, you'll eventually unlock a quest to help Rupert find a wife, thus starting the blind date quest. However, in a gay twist of fate, upon talking to Rupert, he reveals that he's not interested in girls and is actually gay. I don't want to get married to a woman, any woman, you understand? What's not great about this is that your character can choose to be evil and find Rupert a wife anyways. But you can also choose to be good and find him a man. But the best part is, no matter which you choose, Rupert chooses to come out to his dad anyways, and he happily, lovingly accepts him for who he is, and the quest is over. Yes, I'm... What a bloody idiot I am. Of course, I should have known. So like, hey, not great we have that evil option, but either way, the story ends exactly like it should, with family accepting family no matter who they are. And hey, it's a really, really sweet reference to Rupert Giles from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Streets of Rage 3 received a lot of mixed reviews. It's seen as pretty infamous for all the heavy alterations made in the American version that drastically changed the plotline compared to the Japanese release. And one of the biggest changes? It was the censoring of the playable character Ash. A village people derived boss clad in leather chaps, waist cuffs, and high heeled boots, Ash is one of the more fabulous bosses that you can beat the crud out of. And although this game is clad with violence against all genders and colors, the American version did censor Ash from the game, and I will add that Ash was the only character that was censored. He's definitely an important character to talk about. Sure, his character is a bit of a stereotype, but he's really freaking awesome. And somehow the Western version was okay with having a kangaroo as a playable character over having a flamboyantly gay man. It's a good reminder that there was so much censorship like this happening. So when I looked this up, I did find out that the first Streets of Rage came out in 1994. I would say that for that time, that's acceptable. Streets of Rage 3 came out in 2012. Like, that is too recent to be blocking out gay characters from our video games. Obviously, it's not something that we deal with as much now, but characters like Ash are so important to remember and 
keep in mind when we're making games for the future because that censorship did exist and it existed as early and as close as 2012. That was not that long ago. We continue to do better in the video game world with releases of Last of Us 2 and videos like this and the community just being more diverse in general, but there was a point where it wasn't so much like that and it was not that far in the distant past, you know? Let's move on. I will also point out that there were a lot of players who would get Game Genies and then they would use the Japanese version and play the character anyways. The gays will always find a way to prevail and play the characters that they want to, so just keep them in games now. Don't take them out of versions. It's a good idea. So we're basically gonna switch gears right into the same mode. We're gonna talk more about a stereotype gay man in a fighting game, but like Eagle is a freaking gay icon. Like you thought the last guy's outfit was good? Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. What about a gay English butler with a penchant for stick fighting martial arts? And if you put all that together, you get Eagle, who has proudly been a part of the Street Fighter universe since the franchise started in 1988. Unlike Ash in Streets of Rage, the only thing that's changed about Eagle game to game is his outfit. While he's always wearing suspenders, he likes to trade off between a bow tie and a red ascot for a good ass whoop. It's also very apparent that Eagle is an homage to the amazing Freddie Mercury. Not only does he resemble a blonde Freddy, but many of his voice clips are direct quotes or references to songs. The show must go on. The Bureau XCOM Declassified is a single-player third-person tactical shooter game developed by 2K Marin in 2013. The year is 1962. JFK is president and the Cold War has a nation trapped in fear. However, an otherworldly enemy is executing a series of mysterious attacks, and it's all up to Special Agent William Carter to save the day and stop war from both humans and the extraterrestrial. The Australian cryptologist Dr. Alan Weir often gives key insights to what could be out there and discovers huge scientific advancements that help save the world. Being an Australian, fighting in the US is already a bit ostracizing, but it's not the only reason that he feels like an outsider. The narrative director of XCOM confirmed that he is a closeted homosexual, making him both a sexual and political opposition to the rest of his team. So although he's one of the best scientists in the world, he isn't seen as one because he's an Australian gay man in the closet working with elite America militia. Players can choose how to ultimately treat Dr. Weir, but he becomes a key piece to saving the universe and a huge influence to how the game ends. I won't spoil everything in this game in case you guys want to play it, but it's a great game. He's a really complex and interesting character, so I highly recommend it. Your Royal Gayness is the most amazing, most gay indie video game that you've never heard of before. Like, I hadn't heard of it at all until I did research for this video, and like, I am obsessed with it. Your Royal Gayness was a small pipe dream that became a reality when over 364 backers pledged over $7,000 on Kickstarter to bring this project to life. And why would anyone want to donate to this game? Because the plot is absolutely delightful. You play as a young gay prince, Amir. Mom and dad are going out of town to travel the world, leaving Amir in charge of the whole kingdom. Before leaving, they tell Amir that they want him to marry a nice princess. And that's definitely not going to happen because Amir begins to date boys as soon as his parents are out of sight. You do have to take some time in game to spy on these princes around the kingdom to find out if they're gay as well. But I think that all gay people have like actually gone through that so I love that they kind of include that in this game. On top of that, you also have to govern the kingdom and deal with disasters like fires, wolves, and lots and lots and lots of cats. And Amir has to come up with good reasons why he won't get married yet. The excuses you can come up with are ridiculous and amazing. This story-driven fairy tale game is challenging, funny, and absolutely absurd. You have 60 days before your parents come back, but any wrong choices you make can cause them to come back early. Your choices greatly affect the storyline, so you can play this game over and over and over again. 
This game is not your traditional point and click title. This humor filled, puzzle driven dive into a sci fi world has been self proclaimed as the gayest game ever made. Probably because it's a game called My Ex Boyfriend the Space Tyrant. The game follows Captain Minot, who is clearly named after gay icon Kylie Minot as he travels the galaxy in a spaceship called the Pleasure Tron. Like, yeah. This is the gayest video game ever made. Captain Minot is a retired Space Navy captain who has been called back into action when a new and powerful threat terrorizes the galaxy. Obviously, this threat is none other than his ex boyfriend, hell bent on taking over the universe. This game is unashamedly gay and campy. The sexual jokes and innuendos are out in full force, and so are the ripped abs and short shorts. Australian indie developer Luke Miller first released this gay romp in 2012, and of course he immediately received criticism for making it too gay and not pandering to straight audiences. He had an amazing response to this, telling Polygon Magazine that he would understand all the hostility if there weren't so many games for straight men. He was quoted saying, it's not about exclusion, it's about expanding the types of stories told in games which can only lead to more interesting games for us all. And like, I absolutely agree with that. Like, amen, it has nothing to do with exclusion. It's about making future games better. We're definitely getting there. I mean, we have a huge, huge release like The Last of Us 2 that has a lesbian lead, and that's amazing, but like, there's so much more that we can be doing. And we would not have games like The Last of Us 2 if we didn't have games like this. Thank you, Luke Miller. Thank you to all these game designers and all of these characters and all of these people who worked on these games that allowed these gay characters to exist. Like, we would not have representation now if we didn't have representation then. So, we are very blessed to be on this path. We're very blessed to be in this profitable time of video games and this expanding time of video games. I'm so glad to be back and doing this. I have so much to say about video games and so much to say about gay people. So, it's only gonna get better from here. Don't forget to like and subscribe and do that whole bit. It's always at Riley Rose Z on all the things. So here's to gaming, here's to gay people. Let us always be together.